All right, Amy. So we'll start there with that fourth question now. <clears throat> what are your Dark Skies books about and how did you go about the world building for this series? So the Dark Skies books, um, the first book again being Crimson Sky, they follow, uh, they take place in a world that has essentially been um, overrun by vampire overlords and they all kind of live in these, um, the vampires live in these sky ships that kind of watch over the, the, the world and whenever they get hungry, they decide to come down. So a lot of people are, you know, they're afraid to go in the skies. Everything's really dark. No one's really know what, no one really knows what a blue sky looks like. And mm -hmm. it follows um, the main character, Claire, whose sister is kidnapped and she has to team up with um, a few younger sky pirates and essentially um, rebuild their ship so that, or get their ship functioning so that they can go and rescue her sister because Claire is a very skilled engineer. And over the course of the series, um, obviously there's more reveals and again, my dramatic cliffhangers and spoilers and stuff like that. Um, so it really starts with a very, very simple rescue the sister, and then it progresses into something a lot more grand and epic. Um, as far as the world building, I, I essentially, again, just took things that I've, that I've always loved. I'm like, okay, well, I love steampunk. So let's make this a world where the main character has to be an engineer because it's a very useful skill. That's something that she'll be able to, um, work on in a jiffy because she's not really she's she can fight but you know it's she's not a black belt or anything like that like she's she's not really it, it's a lot of luck and a lot of her thinking really quickly um being resourceful of the situation and so building off that i'm like okay well what else would be really interesting i love pirates so why don't we just have some pirates in here essentially and you know they'll have a have a ship that's broken down so she gets to get on it use her engineering skills to get it back in the sky and really the vampire element uh was just because again i i just love all the different takes on it and being able to um to use vampires and kind of their their tropes essentially and just build around that so obviously there's going to be um there's not going to be a whole lot of sunlight. They're going to want to, um, you know, come down and take over or just, you know, stalk the, the land essentially. And so that's going to force everyone to, um, to hide underground and hide in these secure locations. And there's a lot of debris everywhere because the vampires would have basically, you know, to show that they're in control, they would have bombed m much of the world. So, this was definitely also written when um, dystopia was at its at its peak. There's you know Hunger Games and all that kind of stuff, Divergent. So a lot of those um, a lot of those elements, and then added in a little of grim dark stuff to make it you know extra creepy and and dark because again I love that stuff <laughs> and just. Um, just getting new ideas and you know you have this idea of, of like oh well what if they find this warehouse that you know isn't as bombed and you know there's uh there's stuff in there that they can use and then they find a secret so, like it's a lot of just following threads and seeing where they go and just expanding as you write more mm. yeah. oh. Like how, I like how you said that. That that makes me think about that in a little bit different way. I think that makes total sense that an engineer would be, so, you know, well sought after. That that's that's a really good idea. Um, I really like your tagline on here too. They're always watching. They're always waiting. They're always starving. That's like awesome. Immediately <laughs> pulls you in there. Um, I love those covers too. Very steampunky. Very, yeah. Very uh, very cool color scheme there. So yeah, those are really cool. Did you uh, plan on them matching ahead of time or was that something that kind of happened? Yeah. Okay. Um, I, I basically, um, I talked to the cover designer and I was like, you know, I'd like it if they all kind of look similar so that they're really distinct when you see them. 
and you know we'll just change a little bit of the logo and we'll change a little bit of the background so for the final book obsidian sky um i wanted there to be you know kind of like the corroded metal but a little bit of lava in there because lava might be significant or some red light might be significant you'll know if you read it uh, <laughs> so yeah i I've, I've definitely worked with a few artists and it's always interesting to see how covers progress and how um how much like the tiniest bit of input can completely change what you want it to be for mm -hmm. some mostly for the better not always but then again you just work with the artist again and you um give them your ideas and your feedback and all the ones that i've been fortunate enough to work with they're very very receptive and it's just interesting to see how how it all comes together until you get the final product and it's just wow this is exactly what I wanted and this is perfect and I can't wait to see um to see how everyone else receives it yeah. so it's it's always exciting to do that oh it's cool yeah I like little hints on the covers like that too so if the red yeah. light means something <laughs> to me that really you know really helps sell the world building for the book right off the bat um mm -hmm. yeah like i liked will white's like covers um for the first couple books in particular um where he just had like these little symbols and at first before i had the books i'm like okay i'm like it's kind of cool you know and then once i read the books i was like oh that's really cool because it actually is in the book you know and yeah, yeah very in the book person i want the cover to i don't like random covers <laughs> like i like yeah <laughs> tie into the book I was just looking at a novella cover for myself and I was like said to my buddy I go do you like this he goes yeah he goes but you're a stickler he goes does it fit with what's in the book I said yeah I think you know I, said, I think it does you know I said it's not till a little bit later uh you know I said but I think it makes total sense so yeah that's that's mm -hmm. super cool definitely looks good though so that's awesome well thank you <laughs> oh those sound awesome I always love when people just throw vampires and then into a world and then build their entire world around them they always <laughs> really really cool so uh, if that I could put vampires in every story of mine, I probably would. And that yeah. would be what I would be known for. Just, oh, yeah, there's the vampire author. Yep. <laughs> I mean, they are they are very fascinating. You know, I think at that time, too, you know, you had the um, Abraham Lincoln Vampire Slayer book was really yes. popular. Um, there, were, yes. there were a lot of really cool movies, too. Like, there was one movie that I remember came out around that time, too, where it was like vampires... Um, had decided to come out to humanity and then they were running everything and then mm -hmm. we were all just kind of like blood banks and it, it was really in, it was an interesting movie but like the world building was done really well i'm totally blanking what it was called uh but i remember watching it at some point from like family video or whatever and i was like this is written like world building wise really really well because it really made you think like could this really happen you know and it mm -hmm. had a lot of things in it where you're like oh that's terrifying because you know, you could really see that being like an actual thing, you know, if yeah. vampires came onto the world. So yeah, I I totally understand there. I got vampires and, you know, most of my stuff, particularly urban <laughs> too, so yeah, right there with you. <laughs> yeah, and it, it's always interesting too, because it's amazing how much that one element can change everything. I mean, mm -hmm. you put vampires again into urban fantasy. Well, they might have a different hierarchy, they might have a different set of rules, they might be based off a different culture, and they might just be something completely new. And there's just, there's such a common monster, but no one ever does them the same. So it's always, yeah. always refreshing. I mean, everyone always rags on Twilight, but you have to admit, no one ever thought to make Vampire Sparkly before. Yeah, no, it's so I will give, I will give some credit where credit is due, just some, but yeah, it's always, and it always challenges you as a writer to, to be like, okay, well, do I want to do the classic vampire tropes or do I want to do something different? Because, I mean, nothing is wrong with the classics. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's just, it's when everyone has changed the element of vampires or a similar kind of monster so much, sometimes it's good to just go back to basics and be like, you know, they can't walk in the sun, they can't see the reflection, and they can, you know, do the Dracula thing where they climb on walls. It's always, there's always an interesting take that's to be had with the, something like that. Yeah, yeah. Well, I always thought, like, why, why is it in mythology? I always like the history aspect and um and my ogres and overlords like oh, my whole fan urban fantasy like all my stuff's in the same world um mm -hmm. 
and it's like i have i liked it i was like well what if all the monsters were from the same like dimension and i was like what if vampires were originally from that like planet in different dimension or whatever and then i was like well why why would our son hurt them and my buddy and i were talking scientifically and we're like oh, okay like you know if they were used to you know not having a son or a mm -hmm. different type of you know radiation or energy it would make sense that when they come here they wouldn't be able to go out during the day uh so right. we kind of, like kind of that route and it was kind of cool and i was like oh that's kind of cool you know and then we kind of like went from there and i was like oh that's really interesting and then we always really liked the kryptonite thing from superman you know like where and we're like oh okay like we could have where the vampires spread their classic tropes themselves uh, to throw people off from the actual weapon, which is like weapons from their homeworld or their dimension. And like oh. we had where like meteors brought some of that here. And we had a couple of different metals and things that we're like, oh, we're going to have that be from their home planet. Um, mm -hmm. So like if you had one of their weapons or something. So all of a sudden it became like this huge world building thing. And again, from like a random conversation like that, my friend and we were sitting there, he's like, wouldn't it be cool if I'm like, who is that? I'm like, Oh, too much on my plate to write already i'm like have my own fantasy world i'm trying to like finish and then everything he says is so much cooler um it's like how i met your mother where like barney and ted will be like we'll say something and then mm -hmm. one will be like okay that's better and then they'll do the better thing and that's how i feel is like everything he's like he makes me think of and then i like make it better i'll bring it to him he goes oh that's really cool and i'm like you're not mm -hmm. the one writing them though you know? <laughs> like, I have to write them. Like, now i got this you know idea stuck in my head but yeah, yeah, I think vampires are so cool, like you said, though, and elves is another one. Um, mm -hmm. I, I love when somebody takes the classic thing and then changes it in a small, unique way, like, and then it just, it makes it, you know, we're that familiar, but then, you know, you still have, you know, the exciting parts to it. Like, I got yeah. elves, and I, I'm like, well, why, why don't they sleep? I'm like, why do they love the forest so much? Like, you know, why don't they eat meat? And I was like, well, what if they're half, like, half plant? or you know mm -hmm. something like that uh so i have more they have like chloroplast in their skin and stuff and there's just so many writers that do so many cool things like that where i'm like it i agree with you. it just challenges me as a writer to be like that's so cool like when i see your book here and you know i'm like oh that's a really good idea like steampunk and vampires like <laughs> so, and that makes me think uh you know i i like that too because it really makes me think harder on you know my world building you know or you know mm -hmm. things like that so and that's where again i think going back to what you said earlier you know about community i think that's what's so great about community is like you know particularly with like indie authors is you know even if you're with a company like titan you know we're all still in the same boat you know and mm -hmm. we're all trying to push each other in the same direction so i think that community you know feels pretty good at the end of the day you know and you get to see what people do and you're like well i want to be as cool as them you know so you, yeah you know they, you just keep you help each other keep writing i guess is the main thing about it so yeah. oh it's so true i mean i was extremely lucky with crimson sky because i just i just wrote it and i was just you know learning about self-publishing on my own i wasn't you know i i was in that stage where you're like okay well it's available but because I don't have like a million degrees in marketing, I'm not really sure what to do with it. So I'll just do what I know. And I mean, I'm still a big reader. I still um, do a lot of reviews and read a lot of books on Amazon. And one of my favorite authors is Michael J. Sullivan. And I'm awesome. I met him. He was so funny. He is amazing. He is genuinely amazing. And I was just, just out of the blue. He sent me this email saying, um you know i've read your book like you, you were oh, wow. abused age of myth and i read your book and i want to feature feature featured on my website i'm like yes yes please wow. that's, that's so awesome <laughs> oh and it's it just kind of went from there because he um we kept in touch and he was you know email we were emailing back and forth and he was like um you know here's some things that i can give you like if you want to send me some of your writing and you know, I'll give you a little bit of critique or give you advice. It just went from there. And I've, I've been mentoring under him for, for the better part of a year or two now. And it's just, it, it's just so, it's so mind blowing because all I did was write a review for yeah. a book of his that I absolutely loved. And it just, I'm being mentored by one of the best writers in fantasy. And it's just, awesome. it's so, so surreal to have that moment. So yeah, like you're saying, like it just, 
community is huge because he is he like you were saying he's a wonderful wonderful human being and it's that definitely balances out when he does his critiques because critiques are always <laughs> a little difficult <laughs> but it's it's fantastic like, even if the critique is a little uh I wouldn't say harsher a little more intense I would say mm -hmm. you never walk away feeling like you're a failure like he is always supporting and always encouraging like you know yes this needs a lot of work yes some of this stuff doesn't work and it's never it's never a sense of you're doing something wrong it's just keep trying keep learning try new things like there's always that sense of you know um you just have to learning how to write takes a very very long time mm -hmm. and sometimes you feel like you're stuck at the beginning for forever but you just have to keep doing it and keep doing it and sometimes it just it'll all come together somehow and then you can move forward to the chapter two critique and then start all over again <laughs> but no i am i'm incredibly fortunate and very very lucky i I haven't been in a few um in a little while just because I've been focusing so so much on getting this draft done but I'm very excited to go back and just you know learn and you know have my have my critique again I'm ready <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say him him and his wife just seem like they're always just helping people out I know some people there are just oh, like oh, nice. I just said something I just sent a tweet or something. I always want to ask him because like I, so when I met him was the year I met my wife in Phoenix and he was at the poison pen with Kevin Hearn and mm -hmm. Brandon Sanderson, Patrick Rutherford. And I had, I had kind of an idea who Brandon was and Patrick I had heard of, but like, like Michael, I was like, Oh my gosh. Like I couldn't believe he was there. And I brought, I think it was book two. Cause like I, was not making any money as a te teacher in Phoenix. So I bought them used. So I brought him book two, but at the time they did not have the numbers on the side. So mm -hmm. when I gave it to him, he goes, what, you couldn't bring me book one? <laughs> <laughs> and I laughed so hard. I go, I try finding them everywhere. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, I don't like hardcover. I'm like, I want paperback. He goes, oh, I get it, you know? So I was decent. <laughs> I said, you should definitely have the number on the spine. And now I just always laugh because then when I go places, <laughs> Like the numbers are on the spine now and <laughs> so funny so i always want to just ask him be like when did you put the numbers on the spine was i the guy you know like oh i, kind of I hope you were the guy yeah. <laughs> i hope so much i always tell that story but it's just so funny because i i laughed so hard and i went through the lines several times and i just after P i was there all day i mean i think i mm -hmm. got there at like 8 30 in the morning it was packed I did not leave there until probably like 930 at night. I mean, I went through and wow. talked to Kevin several times. I, him and his wife, I went through and talked to um, Brian McClellan a bunch. Um, I, he, there were so many people. Sometimes I have to go back and look at how many, I talked to Michael a few times. There were some just, just great people there from the indie community. That was the first time I ever mm -hmm. heard the term indie publishing um, yeah. you know, as a writer. And there, you know, I talked to him and Brian McCullen a lot of them and there was one other author I always blank on who it is and I got his book somewhere here a couple of them but um you know I talked to the three of them a lot they're like oh this community is just so great and you know mm. they really really like did a great job selling it I feel like you know and oh, one of them sure. pointed out like hey you know like go look at someone they're like go look at Michael's book over there and they're like come back and tell us what you see on the cover so I was like oh that's interesting I'm like you know I'm like Brian over here, you know, has a blurb on Michael's book. Michael's got a blurb over here on, you know, so-and-so's book. And mm -hmm. so I went back and I talked to them like, yeah, they're like, seems like there's a lot of us. He's like, but there's not that many of us, you know? And yeah. And then the, some of the things they said, I just was like really into. So I like kind of, you know, kept it in my mind and it was so cool to see him and, you know, Brian and just so many people from there, you know, just blow up you know, mm -hmm. particularly in the indie community. I just always thought that, that was like, so, so cool to, you know, to get to meet them. This was probably like almost like nine years ago now, like eight, yeah. nine years ago, but it was just so cool to see people's progression. That's one reason why I wanted to do this podcast is, you know, look back in five years and be like, where's Amy at now? You know, like, <laughs> you know? And 
you know, before people get their publishing, you know, um, <laughs> Netflix and stuff, you know, like, cool yep. to do the before and the after, <laughs> like that. but yeah. Oh, that's awesome. He's, he's so cool. I, I really want to have him on for season three. I just been holding off because I have so many people for season three and we're trying to do yeah. particular things. And I'm like, Oh, it'd be cool to kind of have him on with some other people. So we've been, um, oh, yeah. yeah, like figuring out a little, we're trying to be a little bit more, um, productive once my new laptop gets here <laughs> we're not on with, you know like four authors for the seminars and stuff and you know or panels and all of a sudden the zoom cuts out or something like that <laughs> uh, yeah. oh that's really cool well, I'm jealous because he was just talking about you guys on one of the last episodes for wizards warriors on words um yeah I think it was about a month ago now so that's really cool I know him and his wife were talking about you know mentoring and stuff like that so oh okay. yeah 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 so, <laughs> you're the one I'm jealous of okay yeah <laughs> yep, okay. I'm one of them I mean I know, yeah. That's, that's yeah it's and it's just so great because there there's just so much support because they have so much experience and you can they, they know so much and not just about traditional publishing but also about independent publishing and you know how it how it feels to you know, start at the bottom basically, and to still understand what it's like to be there. And then to just build up all that experience and, you know, give like another, give like another perspective of someone who is like, yes, I've been where you are, but these are the steps I took to get there and to know that it's, um, it's a marathon, not a sprint. That's the, the big takeaway that we always have is like, you're gonna try and fail a lot because this is a very, very difficult industry it requires a lot out of you and sometimes you do need a break from it and there's nothing wrong with that either so you know when i when i do go back which will probably be in a couple of weeks because my schedule will have finally aligned mm -hmm. um it's it's just going to be so exciting to see how everyone else in that group has has worked and how far they've come and even just learning from them because they're all very talented as well and they're all in different stages of their careers so it's it's really interesting to form a community of people who are very experienced, people who have a little bit of experience and people who have a lot of talent, but don't quite have the, they haven't published a book yet or they don't have a deal or whatever. And it's just, just getting all those opinions can, you know, you never know what someone's gonna say to inspire you to keep yeah. going with your writing. And yeah. it could just be, it could be the one who doesn't have any experience. They just say something you're like, oh, I never thought of it that way. And that helps a lot, which means you have to put them in the acknowledgements as well. <laughs> yeah, mine's gonna be so long. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, oh, that's super cool. Yeah, well, like I, you know, I really liked the, what they were talking about. Um, with the guys and wizards words and words about kickstarters um yeah like i i was just like oh that's a really good idea <laughs> like i had <laughs> only notes from the two i think it was two, there were two episodes or three they were on like back to back to back and i know dirk you know and michael talk a lot and stuff and he goes up there you know i guess over there for the retreat and stuff um mm -hmm. in this past summer but yeah i was just like oh this is such good stuff i like i think i listened to both episodes like like back to back to back days like i just kept like you know, trying to let it infiltrate my brain. And I had so many mm -hmm. ideas just from them talking about certain things. Yeah. So yeah, I definitely, definitely know how that is. But that's why I do this podcast. People are like, oh, you're still doing that? I'm like, I'm like, I just can't stop. I'm like, <laughs> hearing people's great ideas, you know, hearing that one person were like, I just did this one thing on TikTok and then this happened. I'm just like, I'm like, I love being a teacher, but it is just like, I, like, we're about to have our first child. And I'm like, I just want to be a stay at home dad and write at some point. And mm -hmm. like, I got three nephews, two are in Michigan and one's here. And I'm like, I just want to be able to travel. And I'm like, it's just so hard to do that when you're like older and, you know, it's like, yeah. I'd rather just do it now. So I'm just like, what happens if Amy today, if I don't interview Amy and she says <laughs> the one thing that gets me into the chair you know and gets that really good idea going it's like you know that's again where you know i think community is you know such a there was a twitter post that came out and um uh, mj coon and i talked about this um in our first episode and then our second one for february she wrote where somebody was like in the twitter community i don't know if you saw it it was like a couple it's probably like a year and a half ago now 
where they're like, indie publishing, we're all enemies. Why are people pretending that we're friends? And we were just like, what? And like, I've never seen that person again anywhere, you know? And, yeah. you know, they had published, you know, quite a few books. I think they were just kind of like, oh, a lot of people don't feel that way. And like kind of exited because everybody was like, no, we don't feel this way. <laughs> like, this yeah, is it. yeah, it's <laughs> completely different. Yeah. I mean, yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's one of my, one of my favorite stories from a Polycon was, um, I went with Danielle Jensen and she's good. She's really good friends with Elise Kova. And a person came into Danielle's line and she's like, I have this book that's basically a unicorn. And it was Danielle's book, The Bridge Kingdom. And, or no, it was the, it was the Trader Queen because I remember it was book two. And so we opened it up and it, it looked fine on the outside. It was the right cover. It was the right hardback, but the actual bound pages belong to Elise Kova's book, Fire Falling. So we stared at it for so long and we were laughing because this reader who brought it to us, like she had no idea that Danielle and Elise were best friends. So this woman was, this reader was like, you know, I, I wanted you to sign it so I can bring it to her. So Danielle looks at it and then she like crossed out Elise's name and signed her own name instead. (laughs) And she's like, okay, now you take it to Elise. (laughs) So it's just, it's just one of those things where, again, that would never have happened if the if there hadn't been that community, if, there, if Elise and Danielle weren't so close. And, you know, you don't get to have that experience of, you know, like that reader is going to treasure that book even more now because it was something that only they're going to have. And it just makes such a big difference. I mean, that was, that was again, one of the highlights. Like I, we're still laughing over it to this day because of all the books, of all the authors, it was two who were very, That's very crazy. best friends. And yeah. it really is a unicorn now. No one else will get that misprint. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's crazy. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> that's a great story. I am very jealous of that person. <laughs> that's really I am cool. too, actually, yeah. <laughs> you want to have on yourself. Like, I have some where I, you know, I just have on top and stuff. Like, I have quite a few from, you know, um well I have Michael's like put away and Brandon's like Patrick and a few people um like really really securely (laughs) because I don't want anything to happen I'm always afraid there's gonna be like I'm always paranoid in my basement there's gonna be like a pipe burst or something and uh, the signed ones that I got that day are like you know gonna go uh so I got high on the shelf and stuff like packaged and things but yeah the cool one one of these days when I get like better shelving system and you know some glass or whatever Daniel Aronson has a really good setup actually for his. Um, yeah, I'll put him there. But that'd be a really cool one to have, you know. That'd be yeah. like a once in a lifetime, like kind of opportunity. So yeah. I would love to have a shelf for all my special editions because I'm all my shelves are pretty well packed. And I recently got um a few Jay Kristoff special editions that I'm like, Ooh. okay, I can't, you know, I don't want these to get damaged so I'm going to put them on top of my bookshelf because that's the only place I have for them because I yeah. don't want them to like fall off or I don't want them to be you know wounded in any way yeah but then my fear is like well they're on top of the shelves but it's also by the sprinkler because there's nowhere else yeah, so yeah. my fear is like I might have to move them because if there's a fire or first one you to know, go. Just a, oh they'd be the first ones to go and I would be devastated like I always think that if if for whatever reason my building does ever catch fire I know you're not supposed to leave with any items but I'm going to take those <laughs> ones with me <laughs> I'm going to save them <laughs> yeah you got to get yourself like a t- like a go bag I you do know? <laughs> I do Just throw them in real quick <laughs> top out the window get like a little yep. one of the ladders you know yeah pretty much <laughs> I'm, I don't know if I would hop out my window because that'd be a very very fall or far fall but I could probably climb down. I think yeah. I could climb down. Totally <laughs> <on the> books, <laughs> as long as I save the books, it's fine. Yeah, yeah always. <laughs> well, for that, for that fifth one, I was just curious as to, it really could be for any of your books, really, but how do you decide on your magic system and what kind of things do you do to make sure that your magic system is unique? Um. So a lot of my magic systems, they're kind of based on uh, what I want the characters to be. So, for example, um, 
with the Eros brothers in that series, there's a lot of elemental magic because a lot of the gods were, they would be tied to one element or another. So it was really, and I, I love elemental magic, so it wasn't that hard to kind of, you know, find a way to adapt um, their skill set, which whatever god they're descended from. Mm. Um, oh, that's cool. Yeah, and uh, for a couple other books, um, The Stormborn, which is a standalone uh, young adult story, the, the, the magic kind of came from the concept. It was basically, you know, what happens if storms were sentient for some reason? So a lot of the magic is based off, you know, people essentially are these, um, these beings that are basically storms. Um, and yeah, it usually I just work with the concept and then kind of find um, kind of find ways to kind of incorporate it in the world building, which can be a little tricky sometimes because you want to have your character do all this cool magical stuff, but it also has to make sense in the world that you're creating. So it's not, you know, they do this because magic, even though you know, I use that excuse when I'm drafting all the time, but then I go back and edit and I'm like, okay, I have to make this make sense now. <laughs> so it's, um, yeah, it's a lot of experimenting in the draft and just finding a way to get the plot moving. And then when I go back to edit, it's more, uh, more fine tuning and then um, changing things that don't work or if I need them to work because the plot says like, it has to work this way or your story is going to completely collapse, finding ways to um, either, either alter how the magic works or uh, why things are the way they are. So kind of writing and rewriting the rules, essentially. Um, yeah, so it's uh, it can be a little bit tricky at times, but for the most part, I try and incorporate the, the magic system to directly the characters and to the story that I want to tell and then just adapting it as I go along. Oh, that's really cool. Sentient storms, that's, that's yes. a good one. <laughs> that's the kind of thing that keeps me doing interviews. I'm like, oh, that's really cool. <laughs> <laughs> it was a lot of fun to do. It was a lot of fun. I got to, and, cause yeah, it was just something that's, again, just a stray thought that came through my head one day. And then I'm just like, you know what? I haven't seen anyone else write this before. So I might as well give it a try. Yeah. And it's, uh, it has worked out so well. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's super cool. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> uh, what is one writing tool or resource that you currently use that you could not live without? And then what's one that you'd like to try in the future? And like, tool can can be like it. be a tool, strategy, it could really be like anything. Um, some people have picked software. Some people have picked organizers. People have books that they like to use. I got this like really cool world building book that's I got a while back it's like the essential mm -hmm. world building blueprint and workbook it's pretty cool it's by Scribeforge uh, so I use that a lot uh, but I was just curious uh, some people have been talking about different POVs but I was just curious at what you consider your best writing tool and why and then what's one that you might want to try in the future um I cannot live without Scrivener ever since I discovered it <laughs> it's uh it's I mean it, it just it it's perfect for what I'm drafting because then I can put in a comment and be like okay I need this like this is something that has to change and then I've got all my character listings there so if say I've been too busy with life and I haven't written anything in weeks um or not in weeks in days I should say but you know, if I'm writing and I have an idea, then I'm like, oh, okay, well, this is tied to a certain character trait, so I can put in the character thing, and it's just all in one place, and it's, um, I do use notebooks, and I do update them every, one, every once in a while when I have a chance, but I find that when I write notes, they're not as organized as some other people's that I've seen, which makes <laughs> me very jealous. <laughs> um, I threw my ring off for some reason. I don't know why I did that. <laughs> um, yeah, so Scrivener has been a, a major, major help. I would definitely recommend it. There is a little bit of a learning curve when you start off with it because there's just, there's so much in that program. But once you get the hang of it, especially if you're someone who, who likes to be very organized and meticulous, it's a huge, huge help. Highly recommended. Um, 
as far as getting as far as uh other tools um i definitely like vellum i like that uh you can just compile everything and you know you're good to go it's really simple a lot simpler to use than scrivener and it's good for mm. if you're going to go into independent publishing um i think if there is a tool that i wanted to learn to use more it would be um be stuff related to marketing so yeah so a lot of um i have done amazon ads before haven't really done them recently but it can be it's a little bit complicated because you have to do a lot of experimenting you have to you know put whatever money you're going to use into a certain ad type and then see if it takes off and if it doesn't then you have to you know change your your keywords or whatever and um learning how best to adapt your amazon page into the product you're trying to sell so a lot of um a lot of people have uh like a table of you know this is a book cover this is what it has in it this is kind of what it's about like that's really really big on amazon right now um i'm also trying to use a lot more of tiktok because that i've seen a lot of people have a lot of success there yeah and it's it's like like i talk with my author friends all the time and what we find is that it's it's a real challenge it's a lot harder because you can make all the videos you want to gain that new audience but you also have to find a way to actually sell your product which you know it might not be the same like might not be as simple so you'll have you know great videos and stuff like that and you know maybe you feature your book in one of them but getting that conversion rate is the challenge so i would say that um trying to figure out marketing would be the next um would be the next tool to kind of master because half of being an author is being a business person because even if you get picked up by a big traditional author you still have to put in the work you still have to sell yeah. the product unless you get super lucky and you're immediately Stephen King because Stephen King doesn't need to market he just puts his name yeah. on the cover and then it, it's done it he's got he's got the reputation but it takes so long to build that up and that's you know another thing that that uh, Mike has told us is um you have to build that the, that readership you have to interact with them and you have to you know you know be kind to them be informative and just be like um kind of sell your personality i guess would be a way of saying it like you know you know be uh be open and honest about who you are and that that is a way to kind of draw in readers and then you're just casually drop in, you know, oh, hey, by the way, my book is on sale. If you're interested, it's right here. And yeah, it, um, it, it takes a long, long time unless you're, again, marketing genius, <laughs> but it's definitely, definitely worth it in the end. Because again, like we're, we, like we were saying a lot today, it's about building that community. Yeah. And it's all through, you know, uh, social media, which is just part of your marketing tools. So I totally agree with you. It's just funny how <laughs> I just back to like Michael, like just so, such a personal <laughs> person. Um, you know, like I was just like, oh, okay, like what else you got here? And I think I I think I end up buying the other two books um in that trilogy actually there. Um I think I just got another one the other day, actually, when I was out and about of his, um, so a really good deal. I was like, oh, there's the paperback. Um, <laughs> yeah, but like, you know, I just, it's so funny. I was just talking to somebody about that. They're like, you know, I think the best thing I did, and it was Dirk Ashton and I were talking about it a while back and on um, Facebook and somebody had made a comment about, and one of the groups was like, well, what should I do for marketing? And he's like, I just like to go into conversations exactly like this and have a conversation, <laughs> you know? And, I'm like, yeah, that's, that's, that's what I do a lot. You know, I'm like, I like to talk to different people, you know, particularly authors about their book. Like, you know, if it's somebody's birthday, I'm like, my, my friend's like, you just get so caught up in that, you know, different people that you just, you just like people. He, I was like, he's like, you always forget to say anything about anything. He's like, you just don't care. <laughs> I'm like, well, yeah. I'm like, I just, I was like, well, if it's someone's birthday, I'm like, you say happy birthday. If it's, you know, if somebody has a cool cover, you're like, Hey, I really like that cover. You know, you're like, you know, this looks really cool. This is a cool ad. You know, I'm like, people work hard on this stuff. You know, I'm like, people, you know, you know, I, I share every single book that I see now on TikTok. I 
I'll repost. So it takes me two seconds to repost, two seconds to share it to Facebook. Um, you know, I'll do that every time now. Cause I'm like, you know, I would love if somebody did that for me. And I'm like, I like to, you never know who, you know, I can make a new, you know, favorite author for somebody, you know, a, a new reader for somebody, you know, and I like becoming a new reader for other people. I have a couple people today, actually, I found some cool books on, um, because of sponsored ads and stuff on Facebook. And, um, yeah, I mean, it's just, it's cool to see people's successes, I think personally. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah it's just, it's a good time when you, you know, see people like yourself, you know, are doing well. So it is. And it's, it's always nice to, when, you know, you, like, you want to support someone. So if someone's being, you know, like Mike or uh, Marissa Meyer, I see she's really, you know, active and nice with her community. And mm -hmm. when you see them interacting and just being their genuine selves and just genuinely good people, it's just, it's almost like an instinct to like, okay, well, let's see what they wrote because I really like their personality. Yeah. And, you know, like I connected with them as a person and even just getting that little bit of interest goes a long way because your book is being seen by someone. And, you know, it's, it, even if they don't end up buying it, you still did part of your job. You still got them to look at the book and be like, okay, well, this might, maybe the synopsis just wasn't for them. Like if yeah. they, if they like science fiction, they're probably not going to read a, um, you know, a, a nonfiction or, you know, literary fiction book. It just might not be their style, but maybe they have a friend who does and word of mouth goes so far. Yeah. So yeah, yeah it's just, um, it's a way to, social media is definitely a very, very good tool. I, I don't underestimate it. And it's, um, it can take a long time to kind of build up that, that readership, but, you know, I, I'll post a, you know, video or a comment and, you know, I just have this, like, it's usually the same people who reply, but, you know, they might be one day like, Hey, this person who I've been following for a while has a new book out. Maybe it's a thing for you. It's just, it's, it can seem like baby steps at some point, but you have to start somewhere. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think my, a, a friend of mine, she said, you know, like, it feels like you're inching, you know, like you're pushing something heavy, you know, mm -hmm. like, then what that day, she goes, it only takes inches day by day. She goes, but one of those times she's like, you just got to keep going. Cause that one last push might be the one that, you know, gets you exactly. down that slope. So I, I was like, that's a really good way to think about it actually. Um, yeah. But, yeah. Cause yeah. it's, cool. it's so, it's so unpredictable too. Like you never know what's going to take off. Like yeah, the book exactly. I'm working on right now could be the one. And if it's not, maybe it's going to be the next one. It's yep. just impossible to tell because it's, there's so many highs and lows too. Like I've seen it so many times where an author, um, they write a great book and they just, they take off and then they write another series and it doesn't do very well, even if they're really exceptional. So they have to, you know, just work really hard in their next series and then it's back up again. It's so, yeah. it's so difficult to see how an audience is going to react, but you just got to keep trying. So even if every single book that you write is a huge hit, you're just, you're never really sure. So you just got to keep at it. You got to keep improving. You got to keep learning. And it's, it's like, I, I, as hard as it gets sometimes, I really do love learning about writing. I love experimenting and I love, you know, even looking back on what I've written versus what I write now, like, it's just, I can tell that I'm a different author and my writing right now is a lot stronger because I just have those instinctual lessons that I learned from, you know, reading other books, getting mentored, um, just talking to other people in, in the writing community and making other friends. And you just, you absorb that knowledge, even if it kind of seems overwhelming and it reflects in how you create and how you write. So always learn yeah, yeah. <laughs> never too old to learn yeah amen to that <laughs> some days i feel like <laughs> uh, this one's really interesting for me i came up with it a while back and people have had such great answers if you could take the place of one of your characters who would it be and why oh boy see the thing is i don't know if i would want to switch places with one of my characters because <laughs> i probably find myself in a fight with a monster and it wouldn't go well. Hmm. I think I would want to be. Um, maybe Thea from.
from um, the Arios Brothers series. She's one of the secondary characters mm. and she's a descendant of Poseidon and she's oh, cool. just, she owns her own boat shop and she's just, um, she's, she's just like, I, I love the ocean and she's constantly on the ocean. She has great connection with it. So, you know, she's her own independent businesswoman, and she just does whatever she wants. She has incredible power and she just has a nice, uh, nice sassy personality that I love. Every time I write her, I'm like, this is fun. <laughs> She's always, she always adds some spice to a scene. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's awesome. That's a great answer. That's cool. <laughs> I like that, that, that she's a, like descended from Poseidon owns a boat shop. That's just like, I'm like, why is that so cool, but so simple? I'm like, why didn't I think of that? Like, it's, it's so funny. Like, yeah, that's, that's perfect world building right there in a nutshell. We were just talking about that. It is. We're like, it doesn't have to be super, you know, we're just talking to a, a friend of mine who's like, just, we're trying to get to write and, you know, she's like, yeah, you're just, it doesn't have to be something huge. Like, it would be something a little simple. I'm like, that is so good. Like, that's a simple thing, but it's so good. Like, fits perfectly into that that puzzle piece of who that character is within your world. So that's, yeah, that's super cool. It's Lots all about the details. Yeah, yeah. My friend asked me the other day, I can't remember, it was, like, I can't remember who asked me now. I just did so many interviews. I interviewed a couple of friends and then I interviewed like uh, Herman Stengel and then a couple other people. Somebody asked me, they're like, what about you? I said, I haven't published yet. I said, so I can't say. <laughs> <We're> <laughs> like four things for next year, you have to pick one. And I was like, I don't know right now. It's like, I'll have to get back to you. <laughs> uh, so we'll go with that last one there. Um, do you have any news, updates, promos, or current projects that you'd like to share with us? You did talk about your urban fantasy thriller that's on the back burner. So I yes. will definitely, definitely be looking into that one. So, but do you, yeah. what else do you have uh, going on currently? Um, well, I have a sale going on next week. Oh. Um, let me just double check. Uh, the details of it. Um, I I just had a sale finished, so I'll make sure I'm doing the right one. Um, <laughs> Stormborn is going to be on sale on Kobo for December 5th to December 10th. Um, so that is, uh, I believe it's going to be about 40% off for that full week. So I will be promoting it on my social medias. Um, I'm primarily on Instagram, a little bit on Facebook, and um, I'll probably try and put a TikTok together, but yeah, it'll just be throughout the week. Um, updates. Uh, I will be helping my bestie, Danielle, in, um, I think it's July for uh, Book Bonanza, which is going to be in Texas. Um, that's going to be a big uh, romance author um, author thing it's hosted by Colleen Hoover which is going to be oh, wow. it's going to be intense I can't wait it's going to be <laughs> another like I won't be a featured author there but I, I'll definitely be around so if you're in Texas and you want to come chat with me I'll be there oh, wow. um yeah and it's it's going to be another one of those things where it's going to be so interesting to meet new people and just you know network and you know ask um ask for advice ask for questions because it's going to be uh, I would imagine it'd be a little bit different from a, a polycon like it's um, same kind of author same kind of venue but just how they do it is even that is going to be something I can learn from oh, yeah. um, so that's going to be in the summer um, as for what I'm writing right now I'm working on a dark fantasy with um, it's just pure dark fantasy with uh, vampires and necromancers, vampires, of course. <laughs> There's very much a theme. <laughs> um, so I'm hoping to have that one finished um, probably early next year, just because oh, it's cool. been taking me so long to do. I've had to stop and restart, usually always when I'm at the midpoint, um, which is, again, another thing about writing. You get <laughs> to the middle, and then you got to think about where you're going. <laughs> Yeah, that. That pesky middle. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm hoping that uh, with that one when it's finished, I will start querying again and just see um, see if I can get a traditional deal. If not, I will try and publish it by the end of the year. It just kind of kind of depends. Um, and I'm hoping to start the fourth Arios Brothers book in um, 
probably after I finish drafting this one or unless that vampire thriller <laughs> devil on my shoulder comes back in which case that's going to come first um yeah a lot of a lot of projects that are in development and you know we're you know we're I'm kind of in like that lull where I'm working on something so there's not really something big and exciting coming out next month unfortunately but again it's everything takes time and I'm definitely excited for when I get to release the book again because I've just learned so much in the past couple of years that getting to implement it is going to be half the fun oh yeah 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 I can't wait funny, I talked to an author the other day and he goes yeah I don't really have that much I'm like you just released like seven books in like a year and a half and then have like four more that are like almost done I'm like isn't that fun he goes what well, anything that's coming out right now and I'm like but that's a lot yeah <laughs> as a reader of yours I'm like that is interesting you know I'm like that's yeah that's me, you know that's like, definitely stuff to share yeah Seven I'm months, like you know. holy moly yeah I know I'm like oh I'm like so basically like in I said so basically in like two and a half years time you'll have 11 books out I'm like that's pretty prolific you know yeah and like oh yeah I mean, it's like but nothing this nothing the month this will release I'm like oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like we're talking about like six months I'm like publishing you know I yeah just, exactly he acted like he was super lazy because he had anything coming out in the next two months I'm like no I'm like you're like light years ahead of traditional publishing I'm like holy oh, for sure <laughs> I yeah. talked to a couple recently and they're like oh yeah it's gonna be like two years this is gonna be great and I'm like wow I'm like he's gonna already have like you know 24 have another seven <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's <laughs> yeah it's nuts well Amy I want to thank you so much for coming on it was a pleasure to talk to you you know I got a lot of notes here um <laughs> I nope. saw. <laughs> um, yeah, so oh, and definitely send me, you know, your sale and um, wherever, like Facebook, email, Instagram, wherever. Um, I can give you my TikTok as well. Um, yes. I'll share that everywhere um, this week, wherever I can for you. But there's something else I can do, you know, uh, to help you out, you know, in the meantime, for whatever you have things coming out, just send me whatever, um, mm -hmm. you know, and then we'll get you on the calendar, you know, as soon as you're ready, you know new year summer whatever you know well i'd love to have you back and you know whatever new product you have whether it's an urban you know fantasy thriller or <laughs> dark fantasy or whatever you know we'll get you on and we'll get the word out and help you you know as best we can so oh i would really appreciate that this has been a lot of fun I've yeah, yeah. thank you so much for having me <laughs> yeah of course anytime you want to come back on oh just want to remind the audience you can find all of amy's books and her social links in the description anywhere where this video is audio is found my friend will kill me if I <laughs> forget to <laughs> like edit it in um and then just don't forget um you know our goal for season two has been to really get everybody like you know you're like oh man you know Amy's book looks really cool go to the social and then you find one you really like you read just please make sure you know you guys are you know really reviewing those products whether it's you know audible amazon you know wherever it is um, wherever that book or product can be found because that's going to help out our authors that we have on the podcast the most and then you'll get more things I'll get to interview more authors we'll get to interview you interview Amy again you know and we'll all be happy and we'll all get more books <laughs> in the end so but yeah Amy if there's anything like I said I can do in the meantime you know you just let me know and you know we'll help you in any way we can um you know send me whatever you have at any time I don't care if it's Facebook email whatever if you're like hey can you put this on your site or hey can you put this here just send it to me. I'm always uh, help. I'm always loving helping people sell their books so, or their products. So whatever you got, send it to me and I will get it out on all of our networks and everything. So I would appreciate that so much. Yeah, like anytime. you're saying community, that's the theme. <laughs> yep, we're trying here. Let me tell you. <laughs> I really, well, really appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. Anytime. Well, Amy, you have a good rest of the evening and I'm sure I'll talk to you, you know, if not an email and social media the next couple of weeks, but like I said, send me that sale and I'll get it anywhere I can for you. Okay. Thank you so much. Perfect. We have a good rest of the night. I'll talk to you later. You too. Bye. Bye.